What were you doing on October 21st of last year? Were you celebrating National Hagfish Day? <laughs> Probably not, because you most likely didn't even know that such a day existed. There's a good chance you don't even know what a hagfish is. If that's the case, let me introduce you to one of the most fascinating and repulsive creatures that God has ever designed. Some people call this creature the slime eel. Others refer to it as the snot snake. But it's neither an eel nor a snake. It's a fish. There are over 60 species of hagfish, some of which can grow as long as four feet long. The average is about 18 inches long. The hagfish is most well known for producing massive amounts of slime. Hagfish slime is so interesting because it's truly unlike any other substance in the world. When a hagfish feels threatened or is attacked, it has approximately 100 glands that it uses to secrete slime. When the slime is in water, it can expand to thousands of times its original size in less than a second. A tiny amount of slime, about one one-thousandth of an ounce, can fill a five-gallon bucket full of slime almost immediately. And furthermore, the slime is super, super soft. In fact, researchers believe it to be about 100,000 times softer than jello. Imagine a super snotty sneeze being shot out of the pores of a worm-looking fish, and you start to get the picture. What does the slime do for the hagfish? Research shows that the slime is designed to cause fish that attack the hagfish to choke and gag. And if they don't spit the hagfish out, they can't breathe. So they're forced to release their hagfish. But if the slime is so slimy, how do the hagfish get out of it? Don't they slime themselves? Actually, they do. But they tie themselves into a knot and run their body through that knot, squeezing the slime off like a squeegee. Isn't it amazing how God designed them to be unslimable? But not only does slime help hagfish survive, but its chemical properties are interesting for humans as well. The slime is composed of mucus and proteins, which together make it similar to a wet spider web. The proteins are very tightly coiled, but when they are stretched out, if you were to connect them together, they make the slime very super stretchy. The perfectly designed coiling system is the reason the slime can expand so quickly. Each hagfish contains enough proteins to produce strings that if you were to connect them all together would be literally thousands of miles long. The proteins and slime they produce are stronger than nylon, but they're about a hundred times thinner than a human hair. Researchers who study the slime believe it can be used to create all kinds of helpful fabrics. It's so soft and stretchy, it has the potential to be used in such things as bulletproof vests, car airbags, and even diapers. Oh, and did you know that because the slime is composed of a large amount of protein, it's edible? That gives a new meaning to the term slug burger, doesn't it? Who would have thought that God's slime recipe was so useful? Hagfish are equipped with more tools than that. They can go for months without eating. When they do eat, they don't even have to chew their food. They can absorb nutrients directly through their skin. Imagine putting a hamburger on your arm and it's seeping through the pores into your body. And furthermore, hagfish are covered with very loose skin. What's so important about loose skin? Hagfish don't shoot slime unless they feel threatened or are bitten first. That means they have to be able to live through a big chomp from a predator such as a shark. Their skin's not very tough, and you can poke a hole in it very easily. So it doesn't act like a shield like scales on other fish do. The amazing design is that it's not attached to the fish's muscles or body. That means when the predator bites down on the hagfish, its body simply squeezes over to the side of the loose skin that's not feeling the pressure. Although its skin often gets a puncture wound, its vital organs and internal body stay safe. Hagfish pose a real problem for those who believe in evolution and don't believe in God. When we look in the fossil record, we find a hagfish fossil that supposedly dates back 300 million years. 
And now, we know that the world is not that old, and it's only a few thousand years old, but I'm just using those evolutionary numbers to show the problem. That fossil shows that hagfish have remained basically unchanged for 300 million years. That means they haven't evolved or changed into anything else. You know, for this reason, hagfish are called living fossils, because the hagfish alive today are the same as those in the fossil record. Furthermore, because of the unique body makeup of the hagfish, the theory of evolution has no real group or category where the hagfish fits. Those who understand the truth about creation, they can easily understand this evidence. On days five and six of creation, God created all the different kinds of animals. They didn't evolve from or into any other kinds. The hagfish doesn't have to fit into any evolutionary models because it didn't evolve. It was created. It remained the same kind of fish throughout history as we have seen in the fossil record, and it has not evolved into any other kind of creature. God designed and created the hagfish, and evolution can't explain it. So when the third Wednesday of October rolls around this year, be sure to take a few minutes to celebrate National Hagfish Day. And be sure to remember the creator who designed such an interesting creature. And if you happen to be in a Korean restaurant on that day, order a plate of gamjanjio and wait for them to bring you a delicious meal of hagfish. <laughs>